There are many automatic devices in the key punch. If a number of cards need to be punched and all have the same fields, a program unit is used to efficiently organize the machine. Its operation is similar to that of a washing machine. In a washing machine, the program unit consists of a number of timing devices that activate various program requirements. Wash, hot water, cold water, rinse, and so on. However, the program setting does not determine exactly what the machine should contain. The same idea applies to the program unit in the key punch. Different card formats require a different program. Flexible components allow various programs to be inserted for automatic control of the key punch. These programs are called program cards. Each program card represents a different format. The program card is punched with predetermined holes that will be detected by sensing devices that activate various machine operations. The drum holds the program card. It has 12 grooves corresponding to the 12 rows on the card. Unlike the contact roller's method of completing the circuit, the sensing devices merely dip down when they detect a hole. These star wheels, when dipping into a hole, close a contact point and an impulse is created. The information is read and converted into the appropriate output or function. Here is the program control lever when in the off position. The wheels are raised and the machine is in alphabetical shift. On the other hand, when the program control lever is on, the card punch is in numerical shift if a program card is on the drum. If no card is on the drum and the star wheels are down, the machine might be damaged. When preparing a program card, it is first necessary to consider the detail cards whose fields are predetermined. Once this is accomplished, it can be seen that possibly there are sections of each card that can be omitted or skipped over. Other fields contain the same data on all cards and can be duplicated. A 12 punch is used to describe the length of field. So every column, except the first column of a field, is punched with a 12 punch. The simplest program card would be one that has no holes in it. With a blank card on the program drum and the star wheels lowered, the machine immediately goes into numerical shift. Therefore, a code or punch is necessary to activate the machine to go into alphabetical shift. A one punch in the program card does this. Each of the columns of the program card that contain a punch in the one row will cause the key punch to go into alphabetical shift when punching the detail card. To pass over or skip a field without punching, the machine is programmed to start skipping upon the detection of an 11 punch in a particular column of the program card. The skipping continues as long as the columns of the program card following consecutively contain punches in the 12 row. Again, the skipping is halted when the star wheels no longer sense the continuation of the 12 punch and the machine immediately shifts into the next code. This is especially useful when the card is not completely used and the last few columns hold no data. In this case, the card can skip through the remaining columns. When punching with the help of a program card, the switch at the left of the keyboard panel should be on. Often a series of columns is duplicated onto each detail card. This can be programmed by a zero punch on the program card 
in the column corresponding to the first column of the field in the detail card, which is to be duplicated. The column is duplicated, and as in skipping, duplication continues as long as there is a 12 punch in each of the columns following consecutively. The duplication can be numerical or alphabetical. If alphabetical shift is to be duplicated, then a one punch must be added in each column of the field to be duplicated. Otherwise, the machine remains in numerical shift. It must be noted that the presence of one punches in the columns of the program card permits automatic spacing over blank columns. Blanks are only valid with IBM machines in an alphabetical field. So if the operator attempted to duplicate a blank column while still in numerical shift, the keyboard would lock up. In summary of the program card code, a 1 shifts the keyboard into the alphabetical characters. A 0 starts automatic duplication. 11 starts automatic skipping. And 12 defines the length of a field. And the idea of it all is to set up the punching of the fields of a particular group of cards. With the same format, and automatically duplicate information to appear on each card and skip quickly over all the columns that don't contain any data. It is only one of many things that make data processing so efficient. And it's as simple as 1, 0, 11, 12. If all the students in Louise's class are to have cards like hers, then a program card will be necessary. First, the card code in column one. No punch code is necessary because it's only a one column field and it's numerical. Next, the student number field, columns two to six. Again, it is numerical, so no punch code is needed. Except the 12 code for the field length. Now the surname field. It is alphabetical. So we need one punches for alphabetical shift. And the 12 punches for the field length. Similarly, in the first name field, columns 22 to 31, one punches for alphabetical and 12 punches for the field length. The code for sex is M or F, so the single column field merely requires a one punch. This program card is only for Louise's class. A zero punch followed by four 12 punches will duplicate this data into each card. The age field is numerical. Nothing is needed in the first column, and a 12 punch ends the field in the second column. The phone number field is seven digits and numerical. So the first column is not punched, and the remaining six all have a 12 punch. The program card is completed up to column 46. Columns 47 to 73 have been set aside for the address. It is common practice not to separate the street number, so the numeric key will have to be depressed when this number is punched in. Thus, disregarding the different makeup of different addresses, we program one punches for the alpha shift and 12 punches for the continuation of the entire field. For the remaining columns, an 11 punch for skipping is introduced and followed by 12 punches. It will skip out the rest of the card. Most key punching mistakes 
are immediately recognized by the operator and corrected by punching a new card. Nevertheless, a few errors may pass by undetected. Some checking is done by reading the printing or the actual punches and comparing with the information from the original source. However, for any volume of cards, a faster method of checking is required. The verifier is employed for this function. The verifier is the same as the key punch, except for a few small differences. The punching dies are replaced by 12 punch pins. They don't cut through the card, but merely sense the holes. Here we are verifying an A, sensing a 12 and a 1 punch. Using the information from the original source, a verifier operator repeats the keystrokes of the key punch operator, causing the appropriate sensing pins to fall. But if there is no hole for the pin to fall through, the error light comes on. The operator resets and repeats the required key to check her own accuracy. If the error light comes on again, there really is a mistake. When resetting and trying a third time, the light will stay off, but the machine punches a notch along the 12 edge of the card directly above the column with the error. If there is no mistake, the light will of course stay off and the machine shifts to the next column. If there are no errors in the whole card, a notch is punched at the right end of the card opposite the one row. The verifier gives you three chances before it notches a mistake or moves on. Naturally, any cards with errors that are notched along the top are not notched at the end. This method allows the operator to easily spot the cards in a stack that have errors to correct, and the notch above the column helps to speedily find the error that was made. 